Hello again, it's Pete with GCI Turf, and this is part six of the sprayer calibration series, if you may. And uh, today I want to talk about jar test. Now, what, what exactly is a jar test? Pretty much every single label to a herbicide, a chemical, a product, a, uh, any type of liquid that is applied to a uh, plant, any type of plant, you will find inside the label, it will always recommend when you are tank mixing with other products, other liquid products, that you do a compatibility test or a jar test. So I wanna show you, or give you an example of a jar test right now. Now, the question is, why do you do this? So let me give you a real good example on why you should do a jar test before tank mixing products. Well, about 13 years ago, I purchased my first uh, commercial skid sprayer. It was a 200 gallon on an uh, elliptical tank, um, a full drain bottom with a uh, 300 foot of half inch hose had a cap of 43 gear reduction uh, diaphragm pump. And I was playing around with some different products and um, went ahead and mixed up my, uh, put about 150 gallons in it, put my products in there. Uh, honestly, I don't remember which ones they were. I'm pretty sure, I think it was a, uh, some type of a fungicide along with the iron. I think that is the, the two that were not compatible um, and mixed it up and I ended up with a tank with 150 or 175 gallons of uh, sludge. Yucky, crap. It, it kind of looked like cottage, che cottage cheese. And that took me, literally took me about two full days to clean that out of that tank and to get that out of that pump and to get the machine, the brand new sprayer working again. So that alone was enough lesson for me so that from that day forward, uh, as we, we tried and experimented new uh, liquid products, we always do a compatibility test, always do a tank mixing test. And I'm sure if you're listening to this video, watching this video, and you've had any length of experience in lawn care and mixing things like this, there's no doubt in my mind, you've probably run across this uh, at some point. Now, before we get going, I wanna show you, I wanna tell you that uh, in, this is in no, absolute no mixture of ours. I simply picked out some different products that we use and we're gonna test them out, see how they mix together. I've got two different brands of pre-emergent here. They're both liquid. And you can see one, uh, you probably, I don't think you can tell on the camera, but one of the, li the liquid over here is considerably darker than the other liquid. They're both uh, prodimine. Uh, they simply come from a different manufacturer. Um, and what I mean by that is, uh, take for instance the uh, Ford F-250 and the Chevy Silverado. They both are truck, just like both of these are pre-emergent, but, they, but they're a different brand, the, a different manufacturer makes them. So there's no, di there's, uh, I just, I wanted to do two different ones just for the experiment. Uh, I have Triclopyr here, which is a pretty common post-emergent. I have Speed Zone here, pretty common. Uh, I have a uh, foliar feed calcium here, and I have a soil drench calcium here. Uh, both are calcium. Both are intended uh, for the plant or for the landscape in a different way. One goes, one is used by the plant inside the plant. The other one is used for the dirt. Uh, I've got a, uh, some natural products here. I've got uh, a raw folic acid. And then of course I've got some uh, raw humate, or humic acid. Uh, this is not the RGS, this is a raw uh, uh, product that is melted down from a granular. Um, so uh, there's, 
Uh, we've been using humic acids for 10 years or so. And that I have been through 30, 40, 50, 60 different types, qualities, brands, you name it. And uh, this is just one I had uh, sitting around, so I wanted to use it for the experiment. And then I have a 15-30-O. This is a liquid fertilizer product, a uh, commercial product uh, that we would apply uh, in some uh, circumstances. And the reason I got this is for the phosphorus in it. And, and why I'm making that point, if you spray anything with liquid phosphorus in it, uh, you really want to check compatibility with your other products because for some reason or another, I'm not a rocket scientist by no means, so I don't know, but for some reason, phosphorus doesn't mix well with uh, quite a few things. So you definitely, I know for a fact it doesn't mix well with calcium, so I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, but if you're spraying phosphorus, you definitely want to check that. So basically the setup is I've got a couple of quarts of water here. Uh, nothing special about that, and we're gonna, uh, let's see, let's pour the weed control in first. Let's pour, uh, let's pour that uh, speed zone in, give it a little stir. You can see it gets a little milky color to it. And maybe let's go with some pre-emergent here. And obviously that's gonna change your color. I'm gonna yellow it up some. We're gonna give it a little stir. Now what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for any type of jailing or uh, cottage cheese type effect or anything along that lines so that it, uh, what will happen if that happens then your pump can effectively pump the product out and apply it evenly. That's the whole the basis behind this whole thing. So let's add a little fulvic acid and this is roughly about an ounce of each product. So we're still looking good there. Uh, let's add a little humic acid. Still looking good there. And you notice I'm giving it a little stir. I'm trying to mimic agitation in the tank. And then let's put in our liquid fertilizer right there. So now I would take notes and write it down that that mixture I just had, that I just put together, is plenty good together. See that? It's still very uh, much a liquid. So that would be no problem at all to apply. Let's do a different one here. Uh, let's see, let's put our weed control in first. And obviously, uh, different products recommend different mixing orders. Like we have a natural adjuvant we use that we put, you have to put in dead last once pH is calibrated. And if you watched my video the other day on uh, spray a yard like a pro, you saw me put my Air 8, my, uh, my Green County Fertilizer Air 8 in the tank, and then you saw me drop the pH and add my uh, surfactant. Well, I learned since then uh, since that video that with the air eight product, you can't drop the pH. You have to leave it as is. So air eight goes air eight and water only and you apply it. Um, I do believe that you can tank mix it with, uh, some herbicide or, uh, pre-emergent things like that, but just no adjuvant. The air eight acts as its own adjuvant in a way. So uh, that's why that video looks different now. I had to go in and edit it and take out the adjuvant part. But for us, we, we would use the adjuvant in a, in a, with a post-emergent weed killer or something like that. So obviously the adjuvant would go in last. So as far as mixing order goes, read the label. So we got, uh, this is triclop here. Look at that. Looks like some milk now, doesn't it? And then let's add a little pre-emergent. And the reason I picked these products is we're kind of mimicking uh, our round one and round two application uh, to some extent. Uh, let's put some fulvic acid in there. Everything's still looking good. Let's put some humate in there. Humic acid. And we've got a little chocolate milk going on now. And let's, uh, 
Let's add a little calcium and see what happens. Looks good. All right, now here, here's something. We're gonna see what happens here. This calcium with this phosphorus. And I, I know they don't like each other. Let's see. Let's see if the phosphorus likes this particular brand of calcium. Well, oh, it seems to. Seems to be completely fine. So there's your other uh, jar test. Now I'm gonna grab a separate thing of water here. And uh, this is a foliar feed calcium that we use. And I'm gonna mix, put that in there. And stir it up a little bit. Then I'm gonna go in here with this phosphorus and let's see what happens. Oh! Let me get you closer. This is why you do a jar test. Uh, look what we're left with. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> It's very important that you do a jar test. Could you imagine having 200 gallons of this right here? And you have to clean all that crap out of your tank? That's why it's important. So, at the end of the day, uh, jar test. You, you want to somewhat mimic your water to product ratio in your machine or your sprayer or whatever, and you're gonna take that, you're basically scaling down to 32 ounces. Now, you don't have to be exactly identical. You just want some water in here and some product that you're gonna mix and apply. Put it in the, the, uh, your, your cup or your jar or whatever. Mix it up strictly to make sure it's compatible. That's the only reason for a jar test. And that's the reason you should do a jar test. So hopefully this helps. I will put uh, uh, video one, two, three in the description. And uh, actually, and four, and five. And I'll put those in, in the description. And uh, hopefully this has been helpful to you. And you have a great day.